Yeah, good morning, thank you for coming. Um, I'm here to provide an investigative update in relation to Operation Eclipse. Um, Operation Eclipse has now identified key players in the criminal syndicates that are operating within South Australia. Our objective is to dismantle and disrupt those syndicates and prevent further violence and arson that is currently occurring. Yesterday, serious and organised crime branch with digital evidence section, confiscation section, attended and searched a residential premises or safe house at Paraka. At that safe house, we located a large stash of illicit tobacco. There was a garage adjacent to the premises that had bulk storage. Within that, within that storage unit, or within that uh, shed, was approximately 201 large packing boxes of cigarettes, loose tobacco, e-cigarettes, cartons of cigarettes, all of which are illicit. The estimated value of what was recovered yesterday is up to or in excess of $1 million. We also located at that home address $10,000 Australian cash, $10,000 US dollars, two cash counters and seized two vehicles. We're currently aware that illicit tobacco is being transported into South Australia by road, in light trucks and other vehicles. We know that it is being held in safe houses and storage facilities in the suburban area. We'll continue to identify those locations and seize that tobacco to disrupt and dismantle this criminal activity. The investigation into these locations is ongoing and will continue to be relentless in our approach to find them. South Australia Police will take every opportunity to enforce the full extent of confiscation legislation we have. That will be to seize your house, your premises, your business, your cash, your vehicles and any other assets that we have. We'll also pursue criminal charges where evidence exists to progress a prosecution brief against these criminal syndicates. It's important that we continue to dismantle and disrupt this illicit ta tobacco activity in South Australia to ensure, ensure public safety. We'll continue to work with our partners, which we're doing on a daily basis. And today we've received excellent cooperation from the public with 60 calls to crime stoppers since the 2nd of October this, this month. We're seeking further information from members of the public regarding safe houses and storage facilities that are currently out in the metropolitan and rural areas. I ask neighbours or landlords if you've seen any suspicious activity or there are premises where light trucks or other vehicles didn't previously attend to contact the police on three crime stoppers on 1800 333 000. I'll now take any questions. When you say suspicious activity, obviously you've said sort of light vehicles more coming. Is there anything else people should be on the lookout? Is it sort of these these trucks coming in at you know all hours of the night, or you know people not in uniform? Is there what, what else could people be looking out for other than just activity? Okay, so obviously if you live in a local neighbourhood or you live in a work in a business area, it's not uncommon for activity to occur at certain times. If all of a sudden you've seen the increase of activity address, or you have seen vehicles that don't previously go there. Um, I ask you to contact Crime Stoppers. Is there any indication of how many other properties may be out there that you are looking into? It's clearly evident to us that the tobacco or the illicit tobacco is being transported by, by road into South Australia. Obviously we've had a significant seizure yesterday and it's fairly evident with the number of shops that are currently operating that there will be other storage locations um, obviously with the market that currently exists. How many do you think are still out there? that need to be raided? That's unknown, and I won't comment on how many we actually are aware of the current. Have you seized any trucks as of yet? Um, there's some investigations ongoing in relation to vehicles that are coming to South Australia, and we'll speak to that at a later date. Have police or are police expecting to make any arrests associated with yesterday's raid? That's still subject to investigation, and I would anticipate I'm confident that arrests will be made as a result, as a result of what occurred yesterday. How much will this disrupt, um, this, this raid and um, seizure disrupt the activities of um, the illicit tobacco trade? We're fully aware that this is a safe house of one of the syndicates that's operating in South Australia. To lose the amount of tobacco and tobacco products that were seized yesterday will have a significant effect and disrupt their current, um, their current lead flow. Are there the areas of Adelaide where you think they, these safe houses are, are mainly located? Are there hotspots as such? No, um, they'll be spread throughout the suburban area, and that's why I actually ask 
you know, neighbours, landlords, if you believe there's something suspicious and it's related to illicit activity around the illicit tobacco market, to contact the police. Those 60 phone calls that you said that you received from the public, are they the ones who alerted you to this safe house here? Are they, is that what they're telling you or are they just telling you that some shops selling legal tobacco? What information are they providing? I won't comment on how we got the information that resulted in yesterday's uh, search, but the information that we received is very valuable. And what I do ask is, the information that the public have may only be small one component, but it may actually fit the bigger picture of what we're trying to achieve. So I encourage, even if you don't think it's relevant, please contact Crime Stoppers and advise us. How confident are you that you are actually closing in on the broader operation? Listen, the investigation and the operation is progressing extremely well. Um, that's seen with some of the seizures and the operational activity that's occurred this week. We're confident if we continue at the rate we are, that it will make South Australia a very, very difficult environment for these criminal groups to operate in to sell their illicit tobacco. Can you tell us more about the picture of the truck? So, um, we'll, we'll go through them shortly. The truck is at the end of the day, that's what's actually been loaded uh, from the premises. And are you confident you've got the main players already behind bars? I'm confident that we're aware of who the main drivers of these syndicates are, and they'll be subject to investigation. And obviously, as I said, we'll use every piece of legislative power we have to progress these investigations, and we will use the full suite of confiscation legislation to seize assets at every opportunity. As far as, far as the products entering three syndicates, or are there more? Sorry, one question. Tom, as please. far as the products entering the country, is there anywhere, anywhere specifically they're coming from, and what's been? what's happening there to do with that? Yeah. We obviously work with our partners in relation to the broader illicit tobacco industry, um, but currently we're, our concentration is on how we're going to prevent it coming to South Australia. Does this Paraka property rate have any connection to the recent five arrests? Oh, I won't comment on that. How many arrests have you actually made in total so far since the establishment of Operation Eclipse? So since the establishment, we've now arrested 13 people uh, for the serious criminal activity involved in Operation Eclipse. Are you still focusing on just three syndicates at the moment or have more joined the fold? So, um, we've previously stated there are currently three operating within South Australia and they're our key focus at the minute. That $1 million estimate, is that just encompassing cigarettes or is that all of the illicit tobacco and cigarettes? So, um, that's the estimated value of the full seizure that occurred at practice. All right, we might go through some of the slideshow now, guys. Okay, so on the right, um, this is a pit that was located in uh, the rear shed of the property adjacent to the house. Um, and the rear, that's actually the rear of a truck that was loaded once the exhibits had been managed at the same, to take them from the same. That there um, is the area within the shed and all those uh, packaging boxes contain illicit tobacco products as I've, as I've stated. Just a photo of a list of tobacco located in one of the boxes. Um, here we have a quantity of US dollars uh, with some cigarettes and obviously uh, more cigarettes that are located. That's one of the two cash counters that are located at the premises. That's it. When did these raids first start? When did these raids first start? The race from yesterday? No, under Operation Eclipse. So Operation Eclipse has um, been running for several months and obviously um, we're now, it's, a, it's an absolute priority for SAPOL to prevent the criminal offending that is aligned with the illicit tobacco industry to ensure public safety and the raids will continue. How many have there been? So to date we have searched 18 premises. Okay. Yes, 10 of those are residential and 8 are business premises. Part of this is obviously the intimidation tactics as well, the arsons. Uh, the last arson, as we understand, took place on October 19, at least in relation to the illicit tobacco trade. How do you feel the work that you've done in the last two weeks has prevented further arson attacks from taking place in the last few days, potentially? Yeah, so the disruption work runs take into these syndicates is going to be a key driver in preventing further offences of violence and arson. Um, it's essential that we continue to undertake the activities undertaken. As said, we've previously stated there's reluctant people that may actually be reluctantly involved or have ended up involved in the illicit tobacco industry uh, through no choice of their own. 
we also ask those people to come forward to help us. Is the number still 16 in terms of arson attacks or is it any more? So there's, there's a total of 19 arson offences of business premises and vehicles. And um, what's your message to those criminals who think this is low risk, high reward? It's pretty evident that that's what they think. With any commodity where there's money to be made, organised crime groups will exploit that if the members of the public are willing to purchase that product. We can't be stronger that we intend at every opportunity, if you have assets and you're making money out of this, that we will seize your home, your vehicles, your business, any other assets that you hold. What about the message to <coughs> everyday people still shopping at these stores? Yeah, so everyday people that are shopping at these stores, obviously, if they continue to do that, they're actually progressing the illicit industry that's occurring. And I would ask them to go to the reputable sellers that are actually selling and licensed and are compliant with the legislation. The government um, next week hopes to pass some legislation that will give um, the Consumer Services Minister the power to shut down shops suspected of selling tobacco for between 72 hours and six months. How will that, will that help the police in their work? I mean, will shutting down of shops assist at all? So South Australian Police have been consulted by the government and we've provided an appropriate response for consideration and I won't comment on that um, any further. Can so there have been known uh, stores operating illegally for longer than Operation Eclipse. Were there any raids prior to a couple months ago? Um, <clears throat> there have been previous searches, but obviously since Operation Eclipse has commenced, uh, they're the current figures in the search that have been undertaken. Can you confirm if police believe all, or if not all, most of the tobacco stores that have been targeted so far by arson attacks have been illegal distributors of tobacco, or have some of them been legal distributors but just caught in the crossfire? The, the, the danger here is within the tobacco industry, we know there are lawful operators. The reason we need to rid those who are involved in the illicit trade and the arsons and the violence is occurring so that we can ensure the safety of those operators that are lawfully operating within our, within our environment. Final questions, guys. One more for me. Uh, how close are you collaborating with the Victorian Police, particularly in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, we, we have um, daily and weekly briefings with our partners and the exchange of information between all our partner agencies, whether they be government or non-government agencies, is excellent. Is there nothing done at our country's borders to support your mission as well? Is there nothing done at our country borders to support your mission as well? Yeah, as I said previously, so there are other agencies involved in preventing illicit tobacco coming into Australia. South Australia's safe priority is what's coming to this state, but we are working with those partner agencies when these uh, seizures occur to assist them. Do you want to see more from those counterparts? No, currently um, the work that's occurring between the agencies is excellent. Alright, thanks guys. Did you need any more vision? We'll be getting those, right? Yeah. Sorry, we've got yeah. those, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.